What's the fastest way to become a millionaire? Lend Argentina billion dollars. Now seemingly every recent election in Argentina has led to their monetary policy swerving in an entirely different direction. We need to cut taxes, borrow a whole bunch of money to keep spending, and look to eventually cut that spending. Maybe a few administrations out. Ok, let me take control. Ok, we are going to become a fully independent nation. We're going to default on all of that last guy's debt, we're going to raise taxes, and we're going to raise some spending. Put in place some price controls to fight the inflation that spending will cause. Alright, let me get back to the wheel again. Well, that was a crazy four years. Those price controls are limited growth quite a bit. We're going to do tax cuts, get rid of those government controls, and borrow just a whole bunch of new international money. Now, because of this, you can almost set your watch to Argentine bankruptcies. So, why are we talking about Argentina today? Well, things are, as you probably predicted based on that intro, a bit strange right now. The last guy, Mauricio Macri, did the whole cut taxes, take on a whole bunch of foreign debt thing, and he lost re-election. Now we have Alberto Fernandez who's doing the whole default on international debt and renegotiate the last guy's debt thing. Now what's catching people's attention today is the whole IMF renegotiation that just concluded. Now generally negotiating with the IMF is like trying to get a better deal out of the hitman trying to kill you. Tell you what, shoot you in the knee and we'll call it a day. Plus crypto just crashed so that bitcoin he's paying you isn't worth a full assassination anymore, maiming at best. Now in this case, the problem was the complete ideological shift that took place in Argentinian politics after the most recent election. You see, the last guy was totally down to sign a contract that included severe cuts to government spending that, of course, would kick into effect in a few years. Cross that bridge when we get to it, or more specifically, the next guy gets to it. He was also willing to tie the hand of the government in other ways and get Argentina to behave the way he was already sort of planning for it to behave if he was going to continue to lead. The IMF broke its own credit record in mid-2018 by offering Argentina a whopping $50 billion bailout. It wanted to help a market-friendly government led by Mauricio Macri battle a recession in exchange for fiscal austerity and economic reforms. Yeah. Then he lost the election to a candidate from the exact opposite viewpoint and party and handed over this scalding hot potato to this new guy, Alberto Fernandez. I know you ran on capital control and spending more, but here's a contract that says we're going to do the exact opposite of that. Have fun! Now this negotiation is incredibly fraught because every player in it has a certain amount of leverage over the other players. First, the IMF. Now, the easiest way to comprehend the power that the IMF has in these negotiations is to picture the Argentine economy a bit like Chuck E. Cheese. You walk into one of those establishments and have to pay for everything with those little mouse tokens. Finger trap that breaks after one use? Three tokens. That PS2 that's been on the wall since Bush was president? Two million tokens. Now in isolation, that token economy works just great. The problem is, when Chuck E. Cheese tries to pay a supplier in tokens, or if a Chuck E. Cheese employee tries to buy something from outside the Chuck E. Cheese store with those tokens, well, they're going to get laughed out of that establishment. Nobody except Chuck E. Cheese accepts those tokens. Same goes for the Argentine peso. Want to import something or buy something from an international seller? You're going to have to use dollars or that person's currency to buy it. Nobody accepts the peso outside of Argentina. So how does Chuck E. Cheese get their hands on fresh dollars? Well, you get outsiders to come into your establishment and spend their dollars at your establishment. This pizza, well it's five dollars. Want to play that game over there? Tokens for a dollar. Now you just got some dollars on your hand and you can use that to do all sorts of stuff. Pay suppliers, give it to your employees so they can buy things outside of the Chuck E. Cheese economy, 
go crazy with it. Now expanding from Chuck E. Cheese to Argentina, wow, big expansion there. Their government spends more US dollars buying things than it does selling things and generating US dollars. Now that means that if Argentina wants to keep buying components for manufacturing or having citizens just be able to spend money outside the country, they either need to sell more stuff outside of Argentina or start taking out dollar denominated loans. Now this is where the IMF really derives their power. Unfortunately, these loans are the equivalent of taking lead to fight a headache. Might solve the immediate problem, but soon you are gonna have much bigger fish to fry. The problem Argentina is facing today is not only are they continuing to spend more dollars outside of the economy than they take in through imports, but even worse, investors are making them dollar loans and aren't accepting Chuck E. Cheese tokens for loan repayment. The IMF lent Argentina dollars and they are expecting it to get those dollars back with interest. Net foreign exchange reserves have fallen to $3.2 billion in Argentina. And remember, they owe $50 billion to the IMF. Not great. The country's liquidity reserves, basically what's available in cash, are negative. Dollars are needed to meet large debt repayments, most of all the $2.8 billion due to the IMF in March. Now, unless someone outside Argentina wants to start accepting pesos, that's gonna be quite the problem. So, where does Argentina derive their leverage from? Well, I know as Americans, we've largely become desensitized to pretty big numbers. I'm not clicking on a headline if the total is less than half a trillion. Now, with smaller countries and smaller organizations like the IMF, a bit smaller and more modest numbers like $50 billion are huge. The IMF is out a ton of money here with Argentina, having lent the country a record breaking amount for their organization. You see, Argentina's original deal from 2018 represented more than 10 times the country's credit allowance with the fund, and one third of all of the fund's outstanding credit. A lot of money. Yeah, they had quite a bit of faith in the guy who lost the 2018 election. Someone's getting fired at the IMF. Now Argentina has the money, and if this deal goes up in flames, the IMF is IMF'd. Basically, it's an official thing that now Argentina might be too big to fail. Now, in this case, the final deal came together when the powerful Peronist factions threatened to walk away from repayments if generous terms couldn't be struck, which, as the Financial Times says, is effectively like telling your credit card company that it better play by the rules or else. So, with everyone having leverage over everyone else in these negotiations, we came to this deal that, well, it finds itself being a bit more lenient towards Argentina than the original one that was signed by Mauricio Macri back in 2018. Now, this is significant for two reasons. First, a lot of other countries who owe a bunch of money to the IMF are watching this exchange and taking a bit of notes. Does the IMF depend on me paying them back badly enough that I can bring them to the negotiating table as well? Now, with COVID and rising interest rates wreaking havoc on the economies of developing countries, it makes more and more sense to just sort of shoot your shot on renegotiations and see what happens. Now, I'll be keeping an eye on that story and see if anything actually comes of it. More specific to Argentina, on the other hand, the deal's costs and benefits are really splitting the ruling party over there right now. You see, right now, the IMF would refinance $44.5 billion that it had lent to Argentina with a four and a half year grace period, also known as an election cycle. Let's see who is in the driver's seat when these bills come back to roost. In return, Buenos Aires, according to the IMF, would have to gradually reduce the budget deficit that they have over the next three years and curb central bank money printing. Now, the deal also did not conspicuously mention some things that the IMF generally has beef with. 
specifically the exact same economic policy regime that comes in every time a liberal government takes over in Argentina. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to button down, we're going to default on the debt, stop borrowing, we're going to print out a bunch of money, we're going to command companies keep the prices down to fight inflation, and we're going to try to restrict dollars leaving the country. Basically, we're going to isolate ourselves economically. Now, the IMF generally has some very strong opinions on these sort of policies, but in the case of Argentina, when they're out $50 billion, okay, you can do what you want. You just trim the budget a little bit and you pay us in four and a half years. We'll figure it out. Now, if you were to ask the far left, this is entirely unacceptable. Why? Well, why are we letting a foreign banking group dictate any of our domestic policy at all? The Argentine equivalent of Nancy Pelosi just retired over this agreement, arguing that no deal would have been preferable to a deal where this foreign lending group requires any limits on spending in our sovereign country. I mean, sure it was less intrusive than what the last guy negotiated, but why should they be telling us what to do at all? Now on the flip side of that coin, you have the IMF, who's facing a fair amount of criticism from the finance world. Basically, hey guys, I know you're out a lot of money in Argentina right now, so you gotta renegotiate a bit. Hopefully you get some of that paper back eventually. If you leave things together with this administration's policies though, well that's gonna isolate Argentina from the rest of the world have fewer dollars coming in and out of Argentina, and you're not going to see a pretty penny of that loan. Maybe a pretty peso, but not a penny. Now, until they increase their exports, dollars are not going to be flowing in. You're either going to have to accept these tokens that are only accepted inside Argentina, or just keep hitting the snooze button on collections every four years when it comes to the top of the notes again. Speaking of every four years, before we go, a fundamental issue of these negotiations was whether the divided and unpopular government of Argentina, facing an election next year, could deliver even on these minimal conditions that the IMF set out. Helmets on everyone, because as of now it looks like the conservatives are set to retake control in 2023, and you know what that means. Throw away the price controls and the printing money. We are going to cut taxes and borrow a ton of money at incredibly high interest rates. Whatever bond yields we have to charge to get Wall Street to start looking our way again. Now, I am going to be sure to cover those dead auctions of Argentinian bonds if and when they come to market again. Now, if you want to get a more in-depth analysis of Argentinians' wild swings back and forth over the past 20 years, I made a video going over the modern history of Argentine finances, and there's a link up in this corner or this corner. I haven't really mastered the corner link thing yet. And until then, thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, YouTube. I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom continues to ring. If you like what you saw, well let me know by clicking that like button. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.